lovelies, this is Simsfell and welcome to episode 15 of Niche Warrior Cats with Blossom Clan. When we left off in the last episode, we were having just an overflow of infertile children, which is kind of scary, and we said we would fix it somehow. Some of you guys gave me awesome ideas in the comments of the last video, which I will discuss in a little bit. But first, we need to check up on our map and see how that is going. So guys, this is the map that we had previously. Have a good look. And now I'm going to switch over to the map that we currently have. As you can see at the top, we have had an expansion of our territory um, above Wise Lake. Now the frontier is split into two sections. The topmost section is the frontier as we know it and stated um, because that's where all the exploration is happening currently. And then the area at the bottom that was previously known as the frontier is now Prawn's Rest. And I went ahead and chose that name because that is where Prawnstar, our second leader ever, died. So um, he did some exploration in that area but he didn't really move very far. So that is where Prawn Rest died. And I'm kind of sad now that I think about it, he never made it into the water. He was supposed to follow in Spider Eye's footstep. Darn it. Anyways. The tree at the very top in the frontier is actually known as the Tree of Derpens. And I decided that as well because, as you can see in the background, we have, or maybe you can't see because you have a map there, but we had Pastel Snout and Ripple Foot, a bunch of derp snouted nichelings near that tree and tending to that tree. So I thought, hey, it's, it, it was fun to go ahead and name that tree that so that we can attach a memory to it. But anyways, with that said and done, guys, um, let's start the episode. Right. We are over here with this beautiful, young, no longer kit but poor. This is Swan Kit who needs her title changed to a poor now that she's a little bit older. So let's go ahead and start off with doing just that. Swan Kit is now Swan Poor. Oh, how adorable. Okay, Swan Poor. There we go. And is she going to be an apprentice to anyone? Huh. I think Swan Poor is the one who's supposed to become an apprentice to her father. So she might make her way over to Copper Hunt and see what she can learn from him. Um, you know what? Pastel Snout has actually trained someone. So, yeah, we don't have a whole heap. I'm going to give her one pink. No, I'll give her a yellow gemstone at the very end. To show that she has trained one nicheling. Maybe a pink gemstone. We'll give her a pink gemstone in the end to show that she's trained someone. Or even in the middle. We'll give a pink gemstone in the middle. Sorry for my indecisiveness, but that actually means, guys, that Pastel Snout, if necessary, can become. Huh. She's eligible to be a deputy now. And she's the only one, as far as I'm aware, that has trained anyone. So, you know what? It is also Dostar's last day. And in the past, we have had times where there has been no leader. And you guys have said that we must always have a leader. So, guys, I think with that, with Dostar, you know, settling down in this nest, or just about to, and give birth to her final child, I think um, she's going to realize, hold on a second, um, the clan isn't secure after I pass away and she wants to go ahead and secure the clan So she is going to cry out across this space and Pronounce pastel snout as the deputy because she has officially trained up ripple foot who unfortunately is now stunned So we might need to throw a medicine cat over there <laughs> But yeah, I think I know where Coco Po is going next <laughs> but he is a um, fully trained, fully trained warrior, so Pastel Snow has shown that she can be a deputy. So I'm going to go ahead and give her a yellow gemstone now. Normally, if we have nichelings who have trained other nichelings, from now on, we're going to give them a pink gemstone in the middle to show that they have trained anyone, and, uh, you know, we can decide a deputy from among them or whatever, so that just we can keep track of who can become deputy and who can't become deputy. Huh, right, okay, well... Jeez, we need to move nichelings around. Okay, okay. Little baby oak kit. Oh, you guys also said that if you keep giving the peaceful bear, I think this is what you guys said, peaceful bear 
sticks or nesting material every once in a while, he'll actually look after the little kids, the babies when they're young, if like the adults are nearby. And I thought that was super cool, huh? Kind of like a, a queen or a king, I don't know. <laughs> but let's see, what can we do for these lovelies? I am thinking, but I do want to bring Dosta back is the thing. I do want to bring him back. One, two, three. Okay, one. Here we go, guys. Two and three. So she's going to settle down in this nest. She has been tending to this nursery for her whole life, pretty much, or the second half of her life. So I do want her to, you know, finish being here and having her litter over here because this is where she's always had her litters. Um, but okay, let's see what we can do. Lily Kit, of course, is okay, so... Right, Swanpaw is old enough to... Oh, this is awkward. Okay. Okay. This is what we're gonna do, guys. We're gonna move Swanpaw over here. And then we're gonna move Acornpaw right over there. Wonderful. We'll have little... This... We'll have our kids stay there because it's within the nursery and then give the nesting bear some... Um, I mean, the peaceful bear some nesting materials because he's, he's young. He's not necessarily intimidated by this huge thing. He just wants to play with it. And then we need, I'm not sure if this works again, but we need Bloom Pelt to jump down here. And, or even, we need Cocoa Paw to jump here and help to heal Ripple Foot. Now, I don't know if that's going to work. Hopefully it does. Bloom Pelt, meanwhile, is going to jump in this direction and pluck some berries and be on standby in case the last child Dosta has um, is sick. And unfortunately, nobody has, I think, purred for these kits. Kit and Paw, nobody's purred for them, which is not good. But okay, Lily Kit is gonna jump. She is healthy, so we don't have to worry about it too much in this direction. There we go, that is still within the boundaries of the nursery. Uh, let's get Falcon Eye to go ahead pluck some berries we'll get pastel snout to collect the nuts and kick the tree Andy Lovely is worth saying I should check whether pastel snout is compatible DNH H and B ah, with ripple foot unfortunately she isn't you also some of you lovelies were saying that do you think now's the time the dough star would go ahead and start sending nichelings out as a scout party to see if they can find any wanderers or anything. But here's the problem, guys, in case you've forgotten the rules. If any of the warriors come up to a wandering nacheling, they have to attack them. It says that in the rules. Any warriors have to attack a nacheling unless they have the leader next to them. Or if the leader is the one to bring someone in. If you look back to bronze, you will remember that, who is actually the father of a lot of these niche things, or grandfather. Bronze actually was a wanderer that showed up when we needed him, um, and he bred with Autumn Swift, I'm pretty sure, but he was right next to the leader, who I can't remember. Who was the leader at the time? Was it Summerstar? I have no clue. Maybe It might have been Summerstar, but he was next to the leader, and uh, that's why he got invited in. If he had been next to a warrior, he would have been attacked. So I don't know, if you guys have a workaround for that, let me know what you think. Unless we send the next leader off, uh, I don't know, maybe we'll send Pastel Snout off with someone. And uh, nobody said that Pastel Snout can't have an apprentice, so who knows? We might send over, you know, one of the other nichelings with a Pastel Snout. We'll have to see how all of that works out. Huh. Okay, where is our little apprentice? I'm just gonna have a quick look, sorry guys, at the ages to see how we can work this out. Bloom Pelt is just, oh yeah, and some of you lovelies did say that, you know, Bloom Pelt is beautiful, she's got high fertility, we should breed her. Guys, the problem is, she's a medicine cat, we can't breed medicine cats, they're just not allowed to have kits. So, unfortunately, as beautiful as she is, we just can't do that. And it does suck that she actually happened to be the one with the most fertility, but uh, we can't do that, unfortunately. So... Ah, okay. Bloom Pelt has six days. Her current apprentice is going to become an adult in two days. She should be able to take on Acorn Paw as an apprentice soon after that. Huh. Right. She should be able to. 
So we might just send Pastel Snout. Yeah, she's the leader, but she might be the one who goes out in the days that she has left and tries to scout out some things. I, I don't know. We'll just have to see how it works out. We'll just have to see. Meanwhile, Copper Hunt is going to try and continue to um, make progress on the frontier over here and tear away some more grasses to claim territory. And unfortunately, he's not next to his mate. But in all honesty, guys, it's not like there's a whole heap of love between Dosta and Copper Hunt. This has, if you guys can imagine, been actually a very painful, painful process for them. Knowing that they are siblings, that they are related, um, but that they have to have kids together, otherwise the clan is just going to die out. And, um, you know, they're having infertility issues, all of these other things. But unfortunately, that's the way it had to be. And finally, this painful journey for the both of them is coming to an end. For those stuff, physically and emotionally especially, but it is finally coming to an end. And I think Copper Hunt decided he, it, w it would be better if he spent, you know, this time away from Dostar and not necessarily next to her because it would just become all the more painful if he was right there, you know, having your sister die but then knowing she died. Not only because she's old but because she kind of gave birth to your kid. That's very awkward, so... Ah, I think this is the first pair of nichelings um, who are uncomfortable with being mates. <laughs> At least in my gameplay, being uncomfortable being mates and siblings at the same time. But with that said and done guys, let's turn the day and see what nicheling Dosta leaves behind. Is it going to be yet another infertile child uh, to add to the misery and pain of their relationship? Or is it going to be a, a fertile hope for the future? Let's see. It's derp snouted. It is not sickly. Oh my goodness, six fertility, six freaking fertility, oh my goodness, six fertility, two attack, guys, I think, I think they were blessed in their, like, finally, in their final child, Dostar and Copper Hunt received a blessing. She's like the best child they have had. Oh, guys, look at that. She has HNP. She doesn't even have K. That means if we, oh yeah, she'd have to breed with her siblings, which isn't the best thing to do. But uh, she could breed with Acorn Paw or with Oak K. Actually, no, she can't. They're both infertile. All oh, the sickly ones are infertile, which is probably for the better. But uh, regardless, she has HNP if she finds a nicheling with K, so does Ripplefoot though, but that is pretty cool. That is pretty awesome. Who knows, they might find someone um, on the outskirts, we'll just have to see. Falcon Eye, yeah, she's female again. D and H, H and B. Yeah, that's not gonna be too great. Huh, so guys, holy cow, okay, we need to go ahead and name this kit. Jeez, okay. Um, we're gonna go ahead and name this little kit, who is so flippin' awesome, by the way. Um, let me have a look at the names list to see what you guys left me. Ooh, this is fitting. I'm gonna name her Red Kit. Red Kit, welcome to the family. Oh, this is adorable. Okay, guys, I am excited. Are you guys excited? Let me know if you are, because I flippin' am. But okay, we know who passed away, we know who got sick, or who is sick. How is he doing? I think that did actually help. That, that did actually help. Okay, well, we're going to have Acorn Paw jump down here. Um, she's gonna purr, Coco Paw's gonna purr, make sure her brother is feeling better, and so is Ripplefoot. And then she is just going to, ooh, gather, gather a nut, why not? She's gonna gather that nut over there, and then, Let's have a look. What else is happening? Swanpaw needs to make her way over to her father. There we go. And he is going to take her on as an apprentice. And, oh my goodness, it means Pastel Snout is actually, guys, now Pastel Star. Huh. Okay. Yellow was the color of leadership, right? Hmm. Okay. So here we go. Pastel Star. There we go, guys. We have a brand new leader. And I think this leader, 
Hmm, we'll have to see. But I think she definitely wants to get a move on and uh, come to the front here because rather than focus on food gathering, I think she is currently more focused on expansion. She's really gonna push that expansion regime because she wants to find new nichelings and new blood. Their hope got renewed by the birth of Red Kit, who is not gonna be a medicine cat, thank goodness, so we're not gonna lose that six fertility that we had, but she, well, you know, she's got attack, so she can be a great warrior. Looks like she's got webbed hind legs, so huh, that's quite interesting. But we're gonna have to see how all of that works out, but I'm very excited. Over here, Falcon Eye. Um, I think Bloom Pelt's gonna be looking after the kits more than anything right now. So she's gonna jump here and her. And then, who's her current apprentice? Her apprentice is down here. I actually think everyone's gonna get moving. Yeah. I think everyone is gonna get moving, guys. She's gonna move all the way over here, right to the edge of the frontier. And we're going to have Falcon Eye actually return over here to look after the kits because Falcon Eye is a permanent queen, so she should be looking after the kids anyways. Lily Kit is gonna jump this way and play with her sister Red Kit. I'm sure she's very excited and surprised to see a Nicheling looking very similar to her. Not quite, but very similar. And then Falcon Eye is just gonna collect some berries and feed them to the children, and then maybe try, oh, yep, feed them a root as well. That's quite exciting. Little Oak Kit is very young, so he can't really do much. Hmm. He can't really do much. He can't really move around either. What can he do? He already gave... What is what does replete mean? Replete? Oh, it already has nesting material? Okay then. Well, he can't really go anywhere. If he goes next to Red Kid, he might get us sick and we don't want that, do we? Hmm. So, he actually just might wander off by himself into this grass. See, he could jump into the water, but that would drown him. Hmm. But would he do that? I don't know. He just might. He just might. Um, yeah, he has to stay within the nursery, otherwise it's just not safe for him. Hmm. Hmm. I think we'll just get him to actually jump into the grasses. He is now out of the nursery, which he shouldn't be. He should be in the nursery. Something happens at this stage, no one is looking after him. Ah, oh, okay. Luckily, this isn't an aggressive island, otherwise he would be in serious trouble. But okay, we need to get, let's see, Copper Hunt moving. I think he's gonna just ignore this mole over here and jump in this direction and try to clear some grass, expand the territory. Wonderful. We have 11 nichelings right now, 128 food and 83 nesting material. Let's turn the day over, okay. Right, we have some nichelings have aged up. <gasps> oh my goodness! We have an adult! Coco Paw is now an adult. <sighs> okay, she needs blue gemstones and a green in the middle, so she's gonna get inverted gemstones to show that she is a fully trained medicine cat, but she is not the lead medicine cat. And she needs a proper name. So I'm gonna go ahead, guys, look at the suffixes you guys left me, which thank you so much for that. Let's see what we want to name her. Oh geez, okay. You know, I really like this suffix. We're gonna name her Coco Wind. And the reason for that is I kind of imagine just the, you know, br a breeze coming through whenever Coco Wind or her voice in the breeze whenever she um, sings or gives that healing purr. Just that, you know, wind of heal coming over the nichelings that she is trying to help out. So, Coco Wind, there we go. That is going to be her name. I love it! I love Coco Wind. Let me know what you guys think about that, but I'm really excited about it. Okay, let's go ahead and start moving these nichelings around. And actually, now that Bloom Pelt has trained up Coco Wind, she can actually take on another apprentice. So she is going to summon Acorn Paw to a side, who's going to get a blue gemstone in the middle to show that he is being trained by Bloom Pelt the Medicine Cat. And he's going to jump in this direction and she is going to heal him, right? And she's going to let him know the importance of actually being next to other medicine cats because that's one problem when you have, he's the first sickly medicine cat, 
actually to be ever trained but um the thing with them is that they need to make sure they have more than one medicine cat at a time that can heal them otherwise they're going to get sick and die sick because they can't heal themselves but before we end this episode i'm going to move some of these nichelings around because um if i forget that's going to be problematic for all of us so let's get bloom pelt moving yep we'll get bloom pelt moving over here wonderful and with that said and done guys i am going to leave off here thank you so much for watching i hope you all enjoyed and i'll see you all in my next episode Bye bye